All right, welcome to class. This is on CS 4510, uh, 12-2, and today's lecture is officially titled uh, Time Complexity. I'm actually going to be talking about uh, two specific uh, time complexity classes called P and NP, but I don't want to title this video P and NP because I want to dedicate an entire uh, lecture to the problem of P and NP. So we're just going to call this uh, video Time Complexity. First, let me go ahead and define what these is. Last time, if you recall, we called we we said time, uh, time of f of n is equal to uh, the set of languages decidable in O of f of n. Another way sometimes people write this is D time. And D here is for deterministic because the model is a deterministic Turing machine. I can define P to be the union for all K of D time N to the K. For K equals 1 to infinity, right? So this is the set of all languages decidable in polynomial time. Uh, this is a really big class, actually. Let me give you some example examples that Sipser says are languages in P. Consider the set of two integers, let's say A and B, such that uh, the GCD of A and B equals 1. So basically, this is the set of uh, relatively prime pairs. This is in P because the GCD algorithm runs in polynomial time. It's uh, recursive. It, it's very fast. So you just run the algorithm on the input, and therefore it's in P. Done. Other languages are things like, uh, here's another problem. Uh, consider a graph and two vertices such that uh, U and V are uh, two vertices in G. Uh, and there exists a path from u to v in g. So you can start at u and end at v continuously. Uh, u and v are in the same connected component. Well, what's the polynomial time algorithm for this? Well, it's just BFS. You just sort of uh, breath first search here. You start at u and you mark all nodes connected to u and then you mark all nodes connected to mark nodes repeatedly until you can mark V or not. A bigger, more interesting language is the set of prime numbers. So let uh, P be the encoding of some integer. It's just a bit string such that P is prime. This was actually a very open, uh, an open problem for a very long time. We've had polynomial time primality testing algorithms such as Rabin Miller. And what those algorithms do, though, is they use some randomness and they make some guesses. And they're not always right. They have a low chance of failure, but they still have a chance of failure. So they're only 99% correct. Even if they are very fast, this is enough for it to not, for the Rabin Miller algorithm to not be enough to display that this, that primality testing is in P. By definition, you have to be you have to have correctness. This is implicit. Yet the decider for the, these languages have to be correct all the time. Otherwise, they don't technically decide that language. Decades after the Rabin Miller algorithm came out, somebody came up uh, in the paper. If you want to read it, it's called Primes in P. They gave a deterministic polynomial time algorithm for determining if an integer is prime or not. I think in practice, it might be slower than Rabin Miller if you're willing to tolerate those uh, very small errors. But this, this algorithm in this paper is very, is, has no error, has no such errors. So this is another example of a language in P. Every CFL is in P. So if you recall, I gave an algorithm, if you recall the AAC of G algorithm, this algorithm 
uh, what we did was we convert G to C in a form, and then we brute force search all strings of length N, and then check if that uh, string was in the list of the same strings of the same length. And if it was or if it wasn't, we could we could determine it. So obviously it's decidable. Uh, but the algorithm that we gave was actually not polynomial time. You have to do the sort of brute force searching uh, of strings in each. There could be two to the n possible strings of length n, and each of them would take uh, n minus one steps to derive. So worst case, it's pretty bad. But there is a polynomial time algorithm to determine this, and it uses dynamic programming. I'm not going to present it because it's kind of involved, and I also kind of don't care. But it's there in the Sipser book if you want to take a look at it. It's quite interesting. Okay, so P contains a lots, lots of nice languages. But the next question you should be asking is about its non-determinist equivalent, equivalent, right? So I'm going to give you actually two definitions of NP, and I'm going to prove their equivalent. First, I'm going to give you the definition that uh, NP, I'll call it NP1, and this is defined to be the union of K of N time... Uh, n to the k. And then I'm going to define uh, n time to be the analog of d time, which is So this language is entitled by a non-deterministic Turing machine in O of f of n. The second definition is as follows. I'm, I'm calling it NP2. I'm going to say the set of uh, languages with a polynomial time of verifiers. So Basically, a verifier is like a grader. Instead of taking on an input, it takes on input a problem and a solution, and it checks the solution to the problem. And it has to run in polynomial time for it to be an NP. We say uh, some language L is in uh, NP2 if there exists a V, uh, which takes us input the problem and a certificate uh, such that V checks if C is a solution to V, excuse me, to W, to W in polynomial time. Another quick corollary here is C is a certificate, but C must be polynomial as well in the length of W. Why? Well, because V is polynomial time. If C, for example, is exponential in length, it's not going to be able to read the whole certificate. So to give you another example um, of a certificate, consider uh, this path problem. G, U, V. So for in that pro in the, so let's say path. This is in NP2. And I'm going to call this one here path. So the verifier V, which takes as input the problem instance, which is going to be G, U, comma, V, and then some C. And I'll say C is then the claimed path from u to v. So basically, c is a set, a list of vertices. It's going to be, right, we're going to, we can call it v1, v2, v3, and so on, to v, I don't know, k. Right, so it's going to be some set of vertices from u to v, possibly with repetition. But it'll be a path. Right, and so v is going to do, v is going to check the path, see if you start at u, C for each one if it's uh, if there exists such an edge. So uh, V checks if edges if edges U dash V one 
uh, v1 dash v2 dot 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 a v i uh, to v i plus one v k minus one and then I'll say v k to uh, v exist there's because the certificate also is polynomial in size there's only a polynomial number of edges to check you just check the each edge takes finite amount of checking to do so this is v runs in polynomial time uh so therefore path is an np is an np2 For some languages, it's not obvious what the certificate could be if you're trying to prove or disprove it's an NP2. P, for example, what could the certificate possibly be? You're given an integer and you're given some adjacent information to determine if it's prime or not. It takes a little bit of thinking, but for an example of a certificate, you could pass in, if it's not prime, you could pass in uh, some factors. Right, and then you can check the division of it. You can run them through the GCD algorithm, check if the factors uh, divide the prime number or not. Then if they do, you know it's not prime. If the factors don't divide it, then you're not guaranteed that it's prime, though. So then you have to actually run one of the primality testing algorithms. So immediately as a corollary, P is a subset of NP1. Uh, one. This one should be obvious, right? Every deterministic Turing machine is also a non-deterministic Turing machine. You just, Superman just doesn't have to use his powers and he's suddenly Clark Kent. This was true also, uh, by the way, for DFAs and NFAs and uh, deterministic Turing machines and non-deterministic Turing machines. So every Turing machine which can run in polynomial time can also run in polynomial time if it's non-deterministic. Now, what about the other way? P is a subset of NP2. And two is the definition of the polynomial time verifier. Well, what we're going to do is just run the verification algorithm with no certificate. We're going to just set the certificate every time to say the empty string. And if L is in P, so let's say if uh, L is in P, then there exists uh, a polytime decider for uh, L. Let's call, let's call it D. So then just, just then just set the verifier to be uh, V of W comma empty string to be the decider on W. So for example, the graph and two vertices would be here. The graph and two vertices would be here. This brute force search runs in polynomial time. So the verifier is just going to do the same thing. It's just going to brute force search as well. Now let's get to the important part. I'm going to prove to you that uh, these two definitions are equivalent. So let L be some language in NP1. That means there exists NTM decider, call it N, for L, which halts in polynomial time. Recall the definition of non-deterministic when it comes to DFAs and NFAs. We have, you know, some possibly some possible choices for certain things on the same uh, symbol red. So as the input is run through the Turing machine, the non-deterministic Turing machine has this unholy, mystic, future-seeing power to know which choices to make correctly. What C is, is just going to be the set of these choices. Or I should say the sequence. C is going to be, the certificate is going to be the sequence of non-deterministic choices. So if we were at this symbol and we always went up, then C would somehow contain that information. You can think of it as we maybe we have a very, very large alphabet 
and each symbol in C is going to contain the choice of when we get to that step. Because the non-deterministic uh, decider for L runs in polynomial time, there's an upper bound of the number of these possible choices which have to be made, which is a polynomial. So we've bounded the number of choices from above by polynomial, so C is polynomial in length. Uh, v simulates N on W with advice from C. So basically, it's just going to, anytime it, V is going to simulate N, but then here where we don't know which state to pick, we're going to use C as a reference, and we're going to use that to pick the states correctly. So V is the exact simulation of N on W, given this advice. So V is going to run in polynomial time. So V on W and C uh, is poly of N. So this language is going to be an NP2. Now let's do the other way. NP2 is a subset of NP1. And then this these two together, recall, will imply that these two definitions of NP are the same. Let L be an NP2. So there exists a deterministic uh, poly Venn Verifier V, let's say W and C for uh, some language L. So we're going to suppose that uh, V runs in time N to the K for some K, because it has to run in one of those times. Define N as follows. It's going to take on input W. It's going to non-deterministically Uh, choose C uh, such that the length of C is polynomial in N to the K. So C has length N to the K. Uh, and then it's going to run the verifier. Run. So this is some magic step that happens because it's non-deterministic. This runs in polynomial time. So here N runs in polynomial time. And N is going to be correct because it's non-determinism step was correct. So N decides L in N time N to the K. So L is in NP1. These together imply that NP1 is equal to NP2. From here on out, I'm not going to say NP1 and NP2. I'm just going to say NP. And then depending on what's better for the context, we can say, oh, there's a polynomial time verifier. Oh, it runs non-deterministically in polynomial time. It depends. You know, Maybe for a certain proof, we want to use this definition or that definition. But from here on out, I'm just going to call this NP. I'm going to have to build some more tools before I can talk about problems in NP in a better level of detail. So for now, I'm going to move on from that part. Consider uh, the class I'm defining here is XP time. Sometimes this is just called XP. This is the set of classes decidable in exponential time. So what does that mean? That means that uh, this is the union for all K of time 2 to the N to the K. This is like far bigger than... Uh, polynomial. This is like a very big class of problems. Uh, and I'm going to prove, and I'm going to prove that, uh, so P is a subset of NP, which is a subset then of XP. This one we already took care of. I, I actually proved it for both definitions. But now let me prove to you that every language is NP it can also be decided uh, in exponential time. It should be, by the way, deterministic Turing machine. If I meant not deterministic, I would put an N. So uh, let L be in NP. So there exists uh, NTM N to 
decide L. If you recall here in this proof, we we non-deterministically chose some C uh, of length n to the k. What we're going to do is convert this ntm to a dtm by brute force searching uh, this non-deterministic step. Convert n to uh, dtm by brute force searching for c. And recall, because c is length n, n to the k, there are two to the n to the k possible choices. So the running time of this DTM is going to be at least this many, because you have to check it this many steps. But this is going to be in time 2 to the n to k for some possibly larger k. So therefore, L is going to be in XP. This DTM is going to run in exponential time. You can think of this sort of analogous to the exponential blow up we had for the DFAs and NFAs. The NFAs and DFAs have the same computable power, but not the same efficiency. Complexity, we're not in computability anymore. Complexity is about the study of efficient use of resources. The DFA is to convert the NFA to the DFA required exponential blow up in states. We had one state possible for every subset of possible states of the NFA. This is sort of analogous. Now, we sure, we ran non-deterministically in polynomial time, but that's because we got to use this magic mystical power. But if we had to do this in the real world deterministically, it's going to have to check. We're going to have to brute force check every possible string. So uh, it's true that NP is a subset of EXP.